Welcome back to Any Recapped. Today we will recap The Outcast. Let's begin. A drunk guy roams the wilderness under gleaming moonlight and an endless sea of stars. He starts mumbling about how dissatisfied he is with his life and how he's going to relocate elsewhere to get his life together. He proceeds up ahead through the crow-infested trees until he finds a cemetery. He proceeds to rest there since he is exhausted, remarking on how lonely the cemetery seems now that most of the inhabitants have relocated to larger cities. However, as he is sitting there, he hears someone excavating a grave with a shovel. The whole cemetery begins to tremble, and all graves become undone. When he sees this, he lets out a scream filled with fear since he has forgotten all his worries at this instant. The following day, a young girl goes to the cemetery, and as she gets out of the cab, the driver informs her that something occurred the night before and the police are investigating ahead. Meanwhile, the inebriated guy from the night before explains the events to the police officer. He claims to have seen someone digging up a grave and overheard him murmuring something about Jean. When the police officer hears this, he is shocked, and before he can investigate more, his subordinate informs him that Zhang Zilin's grave is empty. He walks up to the grave and informs him that it belongs to Zhang Chulin's grandpa, who contacted him yesterday to inform him that he would be visiting his grandfather's tomb. He calls Chulin and tells him to meet him at the police station when he gets to the village. The girl from before appears behind him and identifies herself as Zhang Bao Bao, Zhang's granddaughter. Chulin, meanwhile, gets off the bus and is greeted by one of his buddies. When asked why he is in the village, he says that because his college is closed for a festival, he feels he should pay a visit to his grandfather's grave. Later, the police officer summons him to his room and tells him that the graves have been excavated. He further claims that the girl and his elder sister, Zhang Bao Bao, informed him that Zhang Yud is her father and that he abandoned her mother before she was born. The police officer confirmed that her ID was from Shichuan, but when he inquired about her father, she refused to answer and apologized. Chulin departs, stating that he is going to visit his grandfather's grave. Later in the woodland near the cemetery, he hears someone digging up the grave. He attempts and succeeds in capturing a picture of the grave robber, but she discovers him. He begins fleeing for his life, thinking she won't let him live, and after reaching as far as the cemetery, he pauses since no one seems to be pursuing him. On the other hand, she leaps from behind and smacks him on the head with a shovel, knocking him unconscious. When he awakens, he finds himself on the ground, watching the girl fend off a zombie. As soon as he feels secure, she pulls and tosses him into the grave. He begs her to let him leave and remembers the officer informing him about his older sister. Because he believes she is his elder sister, he begins to convince her that they are family and she should not do this to him. However, she denies it, informing him that her ID is fake, which surprises him. However, as she begins to pour clay over him in the grave, a horde of zombies appears, and she begins to engage them. Shulin, oblivious to what is going on, raises his head to see what's going on. Rather than being surprised by the monsters, he is surprised by how effortlessly Bao Bao slices them like a sharpened knife through a piece of banana. After seeing this unbelievable spectacle, Shulin convinces himself that he is dreaming and starts yelling at himself to wake up. When Bao Bao and the other monsters turn to face him, the former flees. After realizing that his one hope has deserted him, Shulin starts to consider what he would do now. Bao Bao, on the other hand, arrives at a spot outside the cemetery and meets a guy wearing glasses. She tells him that she could not reach the cemetery in time and that the enemy stole Zhang Xilin's corpse. She continues to tell him about the zombies and he concludes that it must be the work of a Jingshi CMC practitioner. After they have finished discussing important matters, she informs him that she saw Chulin and that Jingshi surrounds him as they speak. He urges her not to involve ordinary civilians and she says he will be fine. Soon after, a violent thunderstorm explodes at the cemetery and the man informs her that they should check on him. When they get to the cemetery, they see that all of the zombie bodies have been burned due to the massive explosion and the glassy man takes Chulin's student ID card. He asks Bao Bao whether she has ever considered going to college, to which she answers, who? Seeing as she is in need of making light of it, he advises her to enroll in college so she may socialize with others of her age and hands her a new ID. Meanwhile, a young boy gets a phone call and notifies the girl in front of him that they have obtained Zhang Xilin's corpse. The next day, sitting bored in the class, Chulin deletes her picture that he took as a piece of evidence. However, Bao Bao enters the class and sits beside him, shocking him. Chulin starts asking her questions during class, but she ignores him, reminding him that he should only communicate outside class. Following the class, he informs her that he deleted her photo and advises her to quit interfering with his life. She responds that she doesn't have a choice. She then phones Xu San and asks him what he can do with Chulin. When he lets her do whatever, she makes him her servant and commands him to display his ability. A flashback scene follows in which Chulin is scolded by his father for performing Kung Fu on another child. 
When he complains to his grandfather, he advises him not to practice Kung Fu since greater strength brings greed and pride. There are always limits to how kind or strong one can be. Jiang Sitlin teaches his grandson that they should remain in the shadows of society, and even when angered, they should not display their might until their lives are in danger. Presently, Bao Bao pulls out a knife and attacks him, but as Chulin prepares to utilize his power, she backs off. He tells her he pledged never to use this ability, but she forced him to. He recalls his grandfather's instructions encouraging him to utilize Kinku to protect himself from others, and he then proceeds to surround and strengthen his body with Kinku's energy. She observes this and asks why he is defending himself with it before hitting him. As she moves to hit him, he disappears and reappears to securely grip her hand, preventing her from attacking. Meanwhile, two sentient zombies carry Zhang Selin's body to the young boy, who starts to absorb energy from his corpse. When the zombie requests him to allow them to join his group since they finished the mission, he tells them that the energy isn't enough and that they would have to do more to join. He then assures them that if they get Chulin to him soon, he will let them join the group and they depart for work. His sister arrives from behind him and begins hugging him, urging him not to work so hard. She then examines Zhang's body and remarks that if she had been born in his age, she might have experienced and done so much with him, unsettling her little brother with her strange thoughts. At the college, Bao Bao beats Chulin and strips him naked. She then informs him that he is now her servant and offers him an old rusted phone. She tells him she will call them on this phone before going home. Chulin chooses to wait until the night since his clothes are ripped and undressed so he can escape without being seen naked. When he observes two college students kissing in front of him, he becomes envious and promises that when he is older, he will have a gorgeous girlfriend. Later that night, he runs to his dorm, but the two students photographing the moon inadvertently capture him in front of the moon, and the shot becomes viral. In their class, Bao Bao comments on how bored and disinterested Chulin seems during the subject and then shows him the viral image. She satirizes him, saying that people believe that this photo provides a couple of eternal bliss, while in reality, the man is nothing more than a virgin. Later in his room, his buddies inquire whether he would accompany them outdoors, but he does not respond. One of the guys, thinking he's sleeping, remarks that he's been peculiar lately and has no pleasure to be around him. After they depart, he receives a message from his subordinate, Kenken. She invites him to meet her after initial encounters through texts, and the two plan to meet at night. The following day in class, Bao Bao reminds him that she will meet him that night, but he answers that he has an important matter and will be unable to see her. She, however, ignores his remark. Later that night, he goes on a date with his junior, telling her it's not his first date to impress her. Meanwhile, Bao Bao is waiting in the vehicle for him, along with Exu San, who informs her that he may have abandoned her. In response, she pulls out her phone and shows him his current location, asking him to travel there. After dinner at a hotel, Kenken informs him that because their dorm is closed, he should spend the night with her, and goosebumps emerge on his body, believing that it's finally the night. When they arrive at her residence, he notices that it is an old, rusted apartment, but she tells him it is clean inside. She sits near him in her room and starts stroking his body. She then begins to make advances to kiss him. Shulin lets down his guard and she stings him on the head with something. Shulin suspects something is Ori and confronts her about why she has clung to him. However, she mocks him for being so stupid that he fell for the cheap ploy of dating in this modern age. Kenken then summons the zombies who quickly encircle him. Shulin decides to employ Kinku since she is an outsider but fails because she has already placed constraints on his body. They then abduct him and take him elsewhere. Meanwhile, Balabao notices something is awry and informs Xu San. He informs her that he has been abducted, and they begin to pursue him. Kenken, on the other hand, leads him to the young boy and he announces them as members of Zensei, their gang. Kenken is surprised that they did not need any ceremony or documentation to join their group. He then performs a spell on Chulin to elicit the part of his soul that regulates his memories, allowing them to unravel Zhang's legacy. However, Bao Bao and Xu San arrive just in time to save him from the Zensi gang. Xu San assesses the situation and informs Bao Bao that the enemy side has three formidable warriors, Natsuki, the pink-haired girl, her younger brother, Ro Ryu and Kenken, the Xingangxi practitioner. Natsuki asks Xu San to return with her, and they will begin dating, but he declines. He politely requests that she give Chulin to them, so they do not have to resort to violence, but she refuses. When Bao Bao starts to hit her, Natsuki dodges all of her strikes. She is ready to strike Bao Bao when Susan pulls her to safety and warns her that the enemy attacks might harm her. Natsuki begins approaching Chulin. Once she notices she has gotten away from her, Saru, Kekshusan's junior, emerges from the ground, rescuing Chulin, and Natsuki hits him to push him away rather than grasping him. Bao Bao removes the poison worm from his neck, interfering with his ability to use Kinku. 
He then begins to lament how his lone hope turned out to be a ruse. In a flashback, his grandpa tells him there is a rise after a fall and a good after a bad. However, he reminds him that there may be moments when nothing goes his way, but he must stay firm on his path. Just before Natsuki is about to assault them, Xuse and subordinates come dressed as workers to apprehend them. Natsuki and the others prepare to depart when they see this. As the workers attempt to pursue Natsuki, Xuse-san cautions them not to. He then tells her that he would want to resolve things right now, but that he can't since they have other things to do when she leaves. Meanwhile, Ro, Ryu, and Kenken are being pursued by workers. And as their vehicle is going to be wrecked by the assaults, Ro Ryu knocks Kenken out, telling her that she is naive to assume she can join their gang. Bao Bao, on the other hand, comforts Chulin by reminding him that bad luck does not continue forever. However, she quickly turns it into mocking, causing him to collapse with a severe scolding. Su San appears and asks her to accompany Chulin to the agency the next day. The following morning, Bao Bao bursts through his door and takes him to Su San's agency. When they arrive, Chulin is perplexed since it is simply a typical factory. Chusan comes and dismisses his suspicions about a hidden base. Following that, he informs him that all of the workers are outsiders. Because Chulin has no idea what an outsider is, he explains that they are individuals who, unlike regular humans, can control their energy known as Kai. Chusan tells Chulin that Kai is sometimes inherited and sometimes acquired. His key is inherited since he has been able to utilize it without supervision since infancy. Chulin's key, on the other hand, was imparted to him by his grandfather. While debating Zensi's goals, Hexusan leads him to the chamber where Kenken is imprisoned. Xusan questions why a Ryu clan hair, Xiangxi practitioner, would join forces with a hazardous group like Zensei. She, on the other hand, refuses to respond. She then discloses that her only friends since childhood were the corpses she revived, and they too would die once they began thinking. She angrily confesses that she was advised to keep training, but as she grew older, especially after her 15th birthday, her parents urged her to be silent and live like a regular person. Suddenly, Kaushan's buddy, Kaushan, enters and informs her that she must follow their regulations because she has joined Zensei. He tells her that Zensei can do anything they want, and in exchange, people may do whatever they want with Zensei. He kits her, knocks her out of her chair, and begins beating her. Shulin abruptly stops him, telling him that he will have to deal with him if he raises his hand on her again. Given that they are disputing, Kenken confesses that she joined Zensei to discover more about Zhang Zilin's legacy. She tells him that he beat many Zensei outsiders, which piqued the organization's interest in him. Later, in the delivery company headquarters, Kaxusan asks Shulin to join them, but he declines. As he explains that the money is nothing if they can't guarantee his life, Bao Bao beats him up and pushes him to join them. Later that night, he notices someone at his door, and when he opens it, a mysterious creature kidnaps him and transports him to the forest, where two outsiders await him. While the two outsiders are persuading him to join them, another gang arrives and orders him to follow them. Shulin gets enraged because they are trying to decide for him, and he informs them that only he can pick anything he wants for himself. Meanwhile, Kashusai advises Xusan that many foreigners would be interested in Shulin because of his link to his grandpa and the energy he uses, King Kuju. In the forest, Shulin fights the three outsiders in battle but finds himself at a disadvantage. Regyoku, their superior, then beat him severely. Meanwhile, a girl approaches Bao Bao's residence and informs her that Tengikai will be taking custody of Chulin. However, she assures her that it doesn't matter where he goes as long as he is her servant and she returns to her apartment. The second girl introduces herself as Fane Su and begins to attack her. Back in the jungle, Regidoku knocks Chulin down again and tells him that he doesn't know how he stole the King Kuju but he will not allow him to tarnish Tenshifu's reputation. As he prepares to leave, Chulin stands up and confronts him again. Bao Bao emerges from behind him, informing him that his opponent isn't that tough to defeat and instructing him to challenge him. Shulin fights Reiyoko once again, but he uses all of his power this time. Shulin unleashes his Reiho technique, surprising everyone. Reiyoko's disciples realize that the method is only limited to Tenshi Fu and that Tenshi Sama selects the successors to teach them this skill. Shulin, who is battling, first controls the battle with his Lightning Kai. Reiyoko, on the other hand, uses his Dark Key to beat him. As it is about to strike Chulin, Bao Bao comes forward to nullify his technique and threatens the opponent that if he continues, Express Delivery Company and Tenshifu will be at war. Meanwhile, Hedrusai reveals Exusan the Tenshifu's declaration about Chulin, and the latter is taken aback, remarking that they shouldn't have gone this far. At the forest, Regyoku notices his potential and tells him that the next Reintenshu event will unveil the next Tenshifu successor, and that he should go because, given his Reihu technique, he has a chance of succeeding. Will Chulin become the Tenshifu's successor? What do you guys think?
Find out in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.